What's up guys, welcome back to yet another video. In today's video we're gonna talk about a unique and exciting project which combines gaming and technology which is inspired by the game Rainbow Six Siege and the character... Uh, yeah, no. Are you sure? Alright. So without further ado, let's get it started. I built this glove in order to control the device remotely. As in the game, the character used this glove to control a clone of herself to avoid damage. And in real life, I can control drone, robot and anything that you can tell. Well now you may have this question, how can we control other devices or where does the information to control other devices come from? We need stimuli to receive information. The first one is potentiometers, which provide us with data by moving my fingers. As you can see, the black graph shows the values received from the potentiometer, which change when I move my fingers. The second one is MPU6050, the sensor which provides us with the X and Y values when I move my hand. In order to establish a wireless communication, I first used the Bluetooth module HC05, which was placed in the transmitter and receiver as a slave and master. Of course, then I decided to use NRF24 module because it was more suitable for this project. Now I want to show you two small projects that I test to better understand the capabilities of this device. In the first case, I control the direction of the arrow display in a matrix display related to the values of the gyro module. When I tilt my hand to the left, according to the received data, it displays an arrow pointing to the left, and this rule applies to other cases as well. The second case is done according to the data received from the potentiometers. In this way, each servo motor moves from 0 to 180 degrees according to the movement of each finger. Now it's time to show you the process of making this device. Of course, I won't talk much in this part. After this section, we will go to the codes of this project and I will explain to you how each section is coded. This code is an example of using a combination of libraries to transmit data wirelessly using the NRF24 transceiver. 
The libraries are SPI, NRF24 L01, RF24 Wire, and also I2CDF library. The code defines variable for the MPU6050 data and the two potentiometers reading. The MPU6050 is initialized and the NRF24 transceiver is configured with the appropriate data rate and pipe number. The potentiometers reading are mapped to the range of 0 to 255 to make them easier to transmit wirelessly. In the loop section, the code reads the MPU6050 data, maps it to a range of 0 to 255. Finally, the code writes the data to the NRF24 transceiver, which it transmitted wirelessly. The data is then displayed on the serial monitor. In the second code, which is for receiver part, the LED control library is used to control the LED matrix display, and the NRF24 library is used to receive the data. In the code, a structure named myData is defined to store the received data. This structure contains four elements, X and Y for the MPU6050 and the value and value 1 for the potentiometers. These variables are used to store the received data from the wireless module. In the setup function, the serial communication is started and the LED matrix display is initialized. The radio communication is also initialized with the correct data rate and the reading pipe. In the receive data function, the code checks if the data is available on the radio. If data is available, it is read into the data X structure. Then based on the values of data X and data Y, different LED patterns are displayed on the LED matrix display. The loop function calls the receive data functions and displays the received data values of x, y, value and value 1 on the serial monitor. Well guys, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this project. Please hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's helped me a lot. And I see you guys in the next video. Bye.